Well, Billy Clemore spoke to the media today ahead of Saturday's massive Scottish Cup final against Celtic. You know, a game that is just got so much riding on it. Absolutely huge. Absolutely massive. You know, the fact that it's a game that can lead to double in the cup with cups for us, could lead to a domestic uh, league and cup double for them, could lead to them drawing level with us for the number of trophies won. You know, so much riding on it. Just a massive, massive game. But there are two, that's right, two main storylines that have come out of this press conference today. Some of what was what he said to the media when questioned in the televised part of it. And the other is what he said to the written media uh, post pest conference. One uh, concerns John Lundstrom. The other one concerns Rid Van Yilmaz. So where do we start with a story like this? And I think both of them will... No, divide the fan base, possibly. I think the Lundstrom story will divide the fan base. I think the Rid Van Yilmaz story will not surprise the fan base. Um it's it's a difficult one. It really is. Let's let's start with we'll get to John Lundstrom in a minute. Um and what Philippe Clermont said and what made me genuinely sit with my head in my hands with what he said as regards John Lundstrom. Um Let's talk about Ridvan Yilmaz first. You know, Ridvan has been a key part of this team when fit. He's looked the best left back by an absolute mile. He's provided <clears throat> natural balance to this team. He's looked good going forward. He's looked good going backwards. You know, he's left-footed. He provides a natural width that we haven't per se got because of the lack of left footers in this team that can play wide. Um, and I think, you know, when he has been missing in recent weeks, it has been very evident, especially, you know, the fact that Border Barisic is just genuinely dreadful, that Dujon Sterling, although very good, he's naturally right-footed, so we'll come inside and narrow the game, narrow the pitch naturally. So Ridvan has been a huge miss. Now, Ridvan did start and then was replaced after an hour um, in the game against Dundee, I think it was, um, at Ibrox. Um, but then... He then obviously was uh, used as a sub against Hearts. Um, and this season has really struggled to stay fit. And that is the biggest issue with Ridvan. Now, now it looks like Hefte is arriving for next season, which is good news. Robbie Fraser has certainly looked very good indeed when he's been uh, when he's been called upon. And I think, you know, fair play to Robbie. Now, what is the story with Ridvan Yilmaz? Well, this is what Rangers Review have reported post uh, Billy Clement press conference. Uh, Ridvan Yilmaz is a doubt for Saturday's Scottish Cup final after suffering a fresh injury. That means a new injury. Uh, Philippe Clement says the left back told him the news with tears in his eyes. This is getting very frustrating now. It really genuinely is a frustration. Um, Ridvan Yilmaz is a very good player, don't get me wrong. He is a top, top, top class talent. Um, and when he runs forward and he attacks and sometimes when he shoots and he looks almost Brazilian. I've written nicknamed him Ridvandinho at times, uh, you know, with the way he plays. But one major concern for me about Ridvan is that he just cannot stay fit. Why can he not stay fit? Why is he constantly getting injured? Is he is his frame? Is it he's not, you know, not naturally equipped to play, you know, in the hurly burly, the intensity of the of the Scottish Scottish football? Is there an underlying issue there with his fitness, or is this genuinely down to the Rangers injury curse, the, the lack of preseason, well, the lack of a correct preseason, the poor medical um, and recovery facilities at the club, the poor strength and conditioning, which obviously all plays a part. But you know, the fact that Ridvan is possibly out yet again is just huge. It's massive. You know, I I'm, I'm hoping that what I read somewhere that Borna Barisic is injured is true because I really can't handle a lineup with features Borna Barisic, John Lundstrom, James Tavernier um, against Celtic. I just I can't handle it. I can't read that on a Saturday. I can't you know open Twitter. Look at the Rangers page and see all three of those serial bottle jobs, those serial losers starting a cup final. That I think if they do start, it would lead to us, you know, being well losing again, won't it? Because let's face it, their track record against Celtic is very poor indeed. Um, it does, of course, spark a huge debate. Number one, it sparks a debate on a number of things, doesn't it? I mean, first of all, who do you play at left back during the cup final? Do you? put Dujon Sterling there, but is Dujon perhaps more likely to be used at right back to protect the fact that Tav can't defend? Um, or, you know, does Philippe Clermont perhaps put Tav, uh, Sterling in central midfield, you know, to use his legs, his aggression to get after Callum McGregor? 
Um, you know, how does he use him best? And if that's the case, who starts left back? I mean, does he trust Robbie Fraser in a cup final? I mean, it's massive. It's huge. Um, you know, he's unlikely to change the formation to go 3-5-2. So I think or three four one two or whatever. So, you know, we would like to see three at the back. Um, is Big Leon fit? You know, it's it's a real worry. It's a real concern for me. You know, who who do you honestly play there? I mean, personally, I would pick Bobby Fraser over Borna Barisic any day of the week. Um, Borna's crap. He's finished. He's done this club. And we've seen that in his recent performances. And if, if we play Borna Barisic against them in the cup final, if he is fit, I don't know. I think he might be injured. I'm not 100% sure. I need to look into it. Um, then we're finished. And Celtic will target the left and the right, and they'll have massive joy against us because neither of our fullbacks can defend to save their lives. Um, so it's a worry. It's a massive worry. And it's not what we need, you know, to be heading towards a major domestic cup final like this and to hear that he's injured again. And another question it raises is, you know, over his future, you know, is this a player that has a future at the club, a player that is constantly getting injured? You know, a player that has two, three, four, five injuries a season and, and misses games on a regular basis, is he really got a future at the club? You know, this is this is this is a real, I think, you know, question for debate and discussion. And I'd love to know what your opinions are. Um, when I read this um on the way home from work today, um I, I was sat in the car before I got before I just finished sat in the car, reading through a couple of messages um from my daughters and my ex and others, and then when I saw this on Twitter and just like I was like, oh for fuck's sake, why, why, why? Head of one of the biggest games of the year, are we gonna have one of the best players we've got out injured yet again? I just it it just it just defies belief. It really genuinely does. And yes, I know that you know we've got obviously the prospect of Hefte arriving next season, and I think that that's good news. It gives us quality, quality backup. Or a quality starter in place of uh, Rid Van. Let's face it. I mean, if he's a constantly out injured, uh, Robbie Fraser, I think, also deserves a chance. And I would honestly put Robbie in there. I don't think we've got anything to lose. I don't think Robbie would be any worse than Borna Barisic. So if Borna's fit, so look at it for me. That's got to be the case. Now, let's move it along to talk about everyone's favourite scouser. Well, I think probably the least favourite scouser in Glasgow at this moment in time, John Lundstrom. Um, fans have definitely got a mixed opinion on him, though. I think I've heard some fans supporting him and getting behind him and saying that he should start and he's our best midfielder, which I think is slightly deluded. Um, but I, I I worry. You know, look, I mean, forget that performance in that last Old Firm game at Parkhead, if you can, for a moment. Forget the fact that he was awful in that game. Forget, forget the fact that he basically blew any chance we had of beating them. and. Keeping this title, keeping the title race, sorry, competitive until the very end. You know, forget that. Um, forget the stupid sending off, which I know some fans say is not a sending off. But if you know, if you really watch it and watch it back in slow mo or even back at full speed, it is a sending off. It's a ridiculous tackle. Um, Lundstrom genuinely has been poor. Has been very poor as my dog enters the room. Has been very poor this season. He really has um, at times, but he's been good at the times. Ye had that purple patch after Clemon arrived until about March time, and then it all went downhill again. You know, he very John Lundstrom, you know, as he's been in, in his previous seasons with Rangers, you know, so great for a few games, played really well, and then it all comes crashing down around him. Um, you know, he, he's play is often too sideways, too backwards, too negative. He drops back, he goes too deep. He slows the game down an awful lot. And I think, you know, it was interesting, you know, with Raskin and Diamande in that midfield pivot too, that we looked a lot quicker going forward than we did whenever when John Lundstrom was there. Now, I think, you know, a lot of Rangers fans really hope that they don't see him in a Rangers shirt again. And I think that was the sentiment, especially coming out of the old firm. I know with some that softened. Uh, for me personally, I don't want to ever see him on a, on a pitch playing in for Rangers ever again. Um, I think if we see him in the cup final, I think it's a massive, huge error. However, Philippe Clermont did have his say on the matter today. And this is what he said. I never make decisions about fans thinking. That's emotion. They don't know or see what I do. I don't need to answer that on John Lundstrom and the fans don't want him to play. So it sounds from that quote that John Lundstrom will start, that he will play on Saturday. Um, that Philly Clermont will not listen to the fans, which, you know, you can understand. Look, yeah, fans are very emotive. You know, no, no manager particularly listens to the fans when it comes to picking teams, signing players, selling players, whatever. You know, that, that's not how football clubs work. As much as fans would love it to work like that, 
it's never going to happen. But, you know, you read this comment and I just genuinely read this comment. And I genuinely just thought, what, why do you, do you not get it? Do you just genuinely not understand how to play them, how to play that lot, how to beat that lot? John Lund's just played 14 times in his career against Celtic. He's had one good game, that cup semi-final at Hamden, one. One good game against them. The rest of the time, 13 of the times, they've made him look pretty stupid, pretty average and pretty poor. Uh, McGregor runs rings around him. Hatate runs rings around him. O'Reilly runs rings around him. And we lose the midfield battle. Now, I honestly think that if we play Lundstrom on Saturday, we will we'll get beat because we'll lose the midfield battle because they will all run rings around him because he'll be slow. He'll be negative. His tracking back will be poor. And I just, it, it just, I, I don't understand what hold he has over Philippe Clement. I genuinely don't. Yes, we had a spell when he was very, very good indeed. And I get that. And we had that, you know, the Europa League run season. But overall, this season, for the vast majority of this season, he has been crap. Um, and I honestly believe that if we play him, it will lead to our midfield really struggling. Um, he just doesn't have the legs, to, you know, to get in and around McGregor, to get in and around Hatate, to get in and around O'Reilly. You know, we've seen all the old firm games this season, you know, when Lundstrom's played, that those three have utterly dominated him, that the game has passed him by, that he can't live with those players. And to me, we need legs in there. We need players who can get in, disrupt, you know, get after them and dominate that midfield. Sterling, Diamande, uh, Raskan, all better than John Lundstrom. You know, I, I'd even put Cole McKinnon in ahead of John Lundstrom. I'd put Bailey Rice in if he was fit ahead of John Lundstrom. I'd play Kieran Dowell ahead of John Lundstrom. I mean, I honestly just, I, if look, I'll be honest with you. If John Lundstrom plays on Saturday and we lose, Philippe Clement is making a massive, massive rod for his own back. He really genuinely is lining himself up to get, him, get his P45 early into next season if it doesn't work out. And that's not the right answer. I don't for a minute think, that I don't believe that he should be sacked. I don't want him sacked. But I don't understand. And I, I, maybe you can explain this to me, but... How a player like John Lundstrom gets picked persistently. Now, we might be talking complete rubbish and he might not get picked. But from that comment, it almost sounds like that he's going to pick him just to spite the fans. Um, perhaps that's a stupid thing to say. Perhaps not. But, you know, just, I, I don't get it. I genuinely don't understand it. You know, he says we, that the fans don't see what I see. Well, we do see what you see. Okay, we don't see training, but we see games. And we see him dropping into the back four and slowing the ball down. We see him trying to bring the ball out from the back, but slowing the game down because he's not as good as John Suter at bringing the ball out from the back, as Connor Goldson from bringing the ball out from the back, as Leon Balligan at bringing the ball out from the back. All three of those players are better than bringing the ball from deep than John Lundstrom. His passes are sideways and backwards, slowing the game down. Um, you know, his first touch is, is a tackle. No, his second touch is a tackle. Um, <clears throat> again, it's a difficult one to understand. It really is this blind loyalty to, to him. Um, I'd love to know what you think, guys. I'd love to know what you think. Well, that's pretty much it for this morning. I'm going to bring you those two main storylines from the presser yesterday. Both worrying, both concerning. Sorry to be negative. It's sometimes difficult, isn't it, with Rangers to find some positive stories about the club. Um, you know, when players, that, especially with the injury crisis and obviously with John Lundstrom being so useless. Um, guys, let me know what you think. Please obviously drop your comments down below. And if you're, you know, if you want free daily content, free daily opinion, even if you don't agree with it, you know, this is this is a church for everybody. That's the right word to use. Please, obviously, smash that sub. And on the way out, if you can do me two favours. Number one, smash the like. It helps beat the YouTube algorithm. And number two, please remember always, we are the people.